This is my do-it-yourself geothermal system. It heats and cools the master bedroom with this factory unit here by Climate Master out of Oklahoma City. Uh, we like to sleep at 60 degrees year-round, even in August. And that way uh, we're basically zoned. I can go out in the living room when I get up in the morning and not freeze my butt off. Uh, it also got a home-built uh, refrigeration unit on top of that left-hand tank that I made. I bought the compressor off Craigslist. Came out of a uh, used air conditioner and it's just basically a refrigeration system that sucks heat out of the ground. Heat was put there in the summertime by this air conditioner and uh, draw that heat back out of the ground using water loops. Uh, I've got 600, two 600 foot lengths of tubing in a 300 foot trench and it circulates water through the ground. It's uh, just basically a refrigeration system. It, uh, it draws the heat out of the ground and puts it into this water tank which is just a uh, hot water heater that I took the heating elements out of and, and used the ports to plumb water lines in and out of. It, uh, it's a 30 gallon tank. It preheats the water that we use in the house up to 102 degrees and then feeds it into this tank as water is used. This is just another 30 gallon tank and it's set at 120 degrees so I'm heating about 80 percent of my water is heated off that refrigeration system uh, prior to going into this other tank. It, uh, I've got water lines running through the concrete underneath the tile and this pump down here circulates that water through the concrete and uh, heats the floors in the house. As cool as we keep the house it pretty much heats the whole house and I'm trying to get away from using any propane because this is about 80 percent less than heating with propane so uh, it heats the house and heats our hot water and then this unit heats and cools the uh, master bedroom we have probably never used the heater part of it I've got several uh, thermometers to monitor what's going on five of them. There's uh, this meter here will read uh, two different positions and logs, temperatures, and then one sitting on top of this reservoir just reads the uh, temperature of the buffer tank. And then this thermometer down here reads the entering water temperature of the pumps. Now this reservoir is unpressurized and there's just a floating piston in the top of it that floats with the water level and uh, it's real easy to uh, maintain if you ever have to break into the system all these pumps pretty much purge themselves by manipulating these valves to flush air out of the pumps or, and out of the heat exchangers. These flat plate heat exchangers got two of them here, one's for the cold side and one's for the hot. They're very efficient, they're rated at 17,000 BTUs and the compressor is only a 9,000 BTU compressor so the heat exchangers are very efficient and oversized. They're very handy, they're compact heat exchangers so it don't take up a whole lot of room which you can see I don't have a whole lot of room in this closet. It's got a, also it's all hooked up to its own electric meter up here, which reads watts and total kilowatts used. It also reads voltage, frequency, and amps. It's, it's plugged in with a uh, ground fault interrupter that came with that Craigslist air conditioner. And for safety controls, I have a uh, low and a high pressure cutout switch that I can adjust anywhere I want to set that so if one of the pumps isn't pumping up to capacity or for some reason ain't pumping at all and the high side pressure goes up it'll lock out the system 
which has to be manually reset and then the low side is auto reset that keeps it from freezing up should the ground temperature get too cold and uh, you're drawing in water that's below 32 degrees so I had it set up last winter with uh, just a makeshift buffer tank it was a blue tank that was open and uh, it worked so well last winter this fall I went ahead and uh, improved it quite a bit and the numbers are coming out great I'm really pleased with the efficiency of it I put in a uh, sight glass also a refrigerant sight glass that tells the level of the refrigerant make sure there's no bubbles in the uh, liquid refrigerant that's entering the thermostatic expansion valve which is there now this is controlled by uh, for the floor heat there's a thermostat up here that monitors outside temperature and it's working out pretty good I may have to add an inside thermostat but when it gets cold enough I've got it programmed at 40 degrees right now and it gets down to 40 degrees the floor heat kicks on and that's to uh, since it lags behind and it takes a while to heat up prior to it really starting to get cold in the house it'll come on early and it'll shut off early because the floor will continue to heat the house for so the sensor for that is outside goes up in the attic and comes out over here underneath the eave right there is a little probe that senses the outdoor temperature And that's, uh, that's the short end of it. There's a lot more technical details. Some of it I designed myself and a lot of it I got information off the internet on uh, how to plumb this and where to put the valves. But uh, this reservoir is my own design and the main purposes of it, it, of it is to, uh, if you have to do any work on a pump or anything and you, you want to get the air out of the system, you just turn the pump on and... Uh, this long tube will keep the air bubbles from continuing down that tube and into the pump and the bubbles will just come out the top around that floating piston and that, that keeps the air out of it. And they're mixed together so if you happen to be heating water at the same time that this air conditioner is running they complement each other because the air conditioner will heat up the water and the refrigeration unit will take that same heat right out of the water and put it into this hot water tank these pumps are very efficient this one right here only uses 25 watts of electricity it's a brass pump for uh, potable water systems and these two pumps circulate the water that's in the tubes underground and they use a little more electricity about 100 watts for one and 70 for the other and then this fourth pump uses about 100 watts it pumps warm water through the slab there's 400 feet of half inch tubing uh, underneath ceramic tile in the dining room in the kitchen in the master bathroom that's a little bit much at half inch at 300 foot was the limit so I had to oversize this pump to get enough water to flow through there it all started out when we built the house I thought well while we're gonna build it I'm gonna put some water lines in the slab I didn't know if I was gonna heat it with solar or geothermal at the time and I decided to go with solar since Robin didn't want to see any great big ugly solar panels on this roof so this is what it all evolved into up here I've got a, uh, I don't have anything to do with it, this is a uh, water purification system for the aquarium. And that's all there is to it. If anybody's got any questions on it, just uh, give me a comment and I'll respond to it. Oh yeah, this is what it sounds like when it's running. Why is this heating? The quietest heating system there is. You cannot hear anything from inside the house. It just sounds like a refrigerator compressor running. And 
And I've got this set up to uh, record water temperature going in on the uh, high side, on the hot side, and the bottom number is the water temperature coming out of the cold side. So it's 55.9 coming out. The temperature of the water going inside the cold side is about 62. And this 84 number is the temperature of the water inside the tank right now. I had to uh, turn the thermostat up to above outside temperature to get it to come on. I just turn it back down. Too warm inside the house. All that does, that thermostat, all it does is controls this pump down there. That's all it does. It's a line voltage thermostat, so it only needs to uh, carry about 0.7 of an amp. That pump comes on, it uh, cools this water down inside the tank. And by the way, I forgot to mention, I'm using the thermostat that came with this water heater that's inside there. So that thermostat, when it opens and closes, that's what controls the compressor. That's all there is to it.